Skadoosh. We're talking Duskborn today. With release date September 27th, 2024. Let's take a look. Looks like we got some uh, we got some scheme. We got scheme cards. Scheme was a uh, I think exclusive to Arch Enemy, if I'm not mistaken. So that's cool that we're gonna actually have Scheme in a regular base set, I guess. So for Scheme over here, I will savor your agony when you get this Scheme in motion. At choose three, you may choose the same mode more than once. Destroy target creature, target player draws a card. Target player gains five life. It's fun to see Scheme around, okay. Twitching Dial, here's an interesting one where you can get a lot of uh, value out of it with the right uh, setup. Twitching Dial is a two-drop spider toy. It's a spider and it's a toy. Tap, add one mana of any color. Put a nest counter on Twitching Dial. Sacrifice Twitching Dial. If you tap it, create a 2-2 green spider creature token with reach for each counter on Twitching Dial. Activate only as a sorcery. So a way to get this just to get crazy, you play and soul artifact on the Millennium Calendar. While well, it has a lot of counters on it, cast murder on the Millennium Calendar. With the Ozolith in play, Move the counters onto the Twitching Dial using the Ozolith. Sacrifice a Twitching Dial and make a lot of two twos. Yeah, that would get the job done right there. Pretty cool. A little uh, post from Reddit. And then here we have, uh, um, where we go? Time bends to my will. And that is another scheme. When you set this scheme in motion, take an extra turn after this one. Skip the untap step of that turn. I can stretch a single moment of agony into centuries. Who's excited for this set? Here's a basic swamp over here. Uh, I, I think, I, I hope they do this set justice. I, I like the theme of it all, you know. Um, the, 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 the murder, murder mystery, crazy stuff. Is that what we're dealing with here? Horror? It's horror, guys. It's horror. Um, here's a basic mountain, basic, or I'm sorry, basic mountain, basic forest, basic, uh, basic island over here. But more fun, we have a three drop, Screaming Nemesis. Haste, whenever Screaming Nemesis is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any other target. If a player is dealt, uh, if a player, I'm sorry, if, 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 tongue twister, Haste, whenever Screaming Nemesis is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any other target. If a player is dealt damage this way, they can't gain life for the rest of the game. I like that. Because, man, I've gone up against some life gain decks. I think we all have. And they can just be so obnoxious. Oh, you gained life. Well, I, I gained 100 life this turn. Oh, I went infinite with uh, the god over here. Like, ah, oh, cool story, dude. Let's, let's just shut those decks down. You know, that's what Screaming Nemesis is aiming to do here. Here's a really crazy one. Doomsday Excruciator. Six black mana creature demon. It's uh, got flying. It's a six six. When doom, this is nuts. When doomsday ex, uh, excruciator enters, if it was cast, each player exiles all but the bottom six cards of their library face down. Wow! <laughs> wow! 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 Okay. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card stereotypical support makes a really good point here. Uh, he said, I cannot see this seeing serious play. The unreliability of leaving six unknown cards in your deck is really bad. Yeah. If it is going to see play in crook, the, uh, crook builds is an obvious contender because of the mana cost. But how do you not shoot yourself in the foot with, its reli uh, with, with, with it reliably? That's a really good question. So uh, someone else said, so I asked my buddy about this card. He said, Quirk players don't play Quirk because it's an amazing deck. They play it because it's metal. And Doomsday Excruciator is metal. Sounds like he's going to try jamming it for a, a while at least. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how uh, how this one's going to pan out. But yeah, we're Quirk cr cr decks, if I'm saying that correct. You know, that's, I guess, where you're going to find it. Then we got Collected Company, a special, uh, a special guest card that's going to be uh, reintroduced. In, uh, in with this set. And then we have the Wandering Rescuer. Five drop. Human Samurai Noble. It's got Flash and Convoke, which I do like that. Double Strike. Other tapped creatures you control have Hexproof. It's a five drop, though. But, I mean, you can easily make this a two drop, you know, you can, if it's Convoked. You get three creatures to tap it down, man. And it looks like, uh, what are you, what, what you going to run here? Human Samurai Noble. It's going to need a home for sure, but I like the double strike on it. They mean humans. There's that. Five drop seems a bit 
seems a bit pricey. And the creatures, um, if they're tapped, they have hexproof. And it's other tapped creatures, not just, it's not this one. <laughs> other tapped, okay. But the fact that you can flash it in, I mean, that's kind of cool. If someone's trying to target your stuff, you know, then you just flash this in, but they already have to be tapped. So maybe like, okay, during an attack phase, I suppose. Okay. And here's a big old friend for us. Toby Beastie Befriender. Human wizard, legendary creature. It's only a three drop on a 1-1 one -one, though. When Toby a bestie, a Beastie Befriender enters, create a 4-4 four -four white beast creature token with this creature can't attack or block alone. As long as you control four more creature tokens, creature tokens you control are flying. So I guess just bounce it a whole bunch uh, is really how you want to get the value out of this. Sure, I'm pretty small, but Gribble isn't. So I don't get scared. Oh, his friend protects him. His friend's got a bunch of masks on his face too, I noticed. Okay. So there's a, there is a Toby, Beastie Befriender. Nowhere to run on common action, two drop. Is this going to be a powerful one? Let's find out. Two drop. Enchantment with flash. When nowhere to run enters, target creature and opponent controls gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. Creatures your opponent's control can be the target of spells and abilities as though they didn't have hexproof. Ward abilities of those creatures don't trigger. Oh, I do like that. That's a good enchantment to shut down a bunch of them uh, ward builds, man. Ward abilities of those creatures don't trigger. That's cool. So, yeah, that's real. That, I think a card like this was needed, and I like that it's only a two drop. Okay. I can dig it, man. Uh, here's Fear of Missing Out to the right over here. Fear of Missing Out. When Fear of Missing Out enters, discard a card, then draw a card. It's a two, three for two. Delirium. Whenever Fear of Missing Out attacks for the first time each turn, if there are four or more card types, among cards in your graveyard, untapped target creature. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. A whole lot of these cards, like kind of like the like the goifs, you know, that care about all the creature or all the different types um, in your graveyard. Let me read that one more time. Or more card types. Yeah, card types. So instant sorcery, land, enchantment, you know, aura, and all stuff like that. Uh, that that's gonna matter here. All right, fear of missing out. Man, cards can be really powerful when you put them in the right deck. Synergy is everything, man. Nowhere to run. We already covered. Uh, there's a Plains. And um, here is Come Back Wrong. That just sounds weird. Three drop sorcery. Destroy target creature. If a creature card is put into a graveyard this way, return it to the battlefield under your control. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. That's dope. Creature cards went into graveyard this way. Return to the battlefield under your control. If only there's a way to get around that uh, sacrifice to get the beginning of the next end step, you know, that would be pretty massive. But sometimes, I mean, if you steal like an Emrakul or something like that, you know, a big boy, you get a lot of value out of that really quick. It doesn't really matter. Um, here is Cursed Recording. All right. Four drop artifact in red. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a time counter on Cursed Recording. Then if there are seven or more time counters on it, remove those counters and it deals 20 damage to you. It deals 20 damage to you. Okay. When you cast, and if you tap it, when you, when you next cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Sorcery spell, put a time counter on Cursed. More time counters on it. Wow. You need to win quick with that. I mean, I would hope if you're able to copy that many spells, if you can copy seven spells, you know, or if, you're, if it's in a life game deck, I guess also. But really, you play that much, it's already got to be, what, turn three, turn four, you get Curse Recording out. You, you lose a whole turn, I mean, based on just playing this damn thing. It's one of those, is it worth it, you know? Is, is it, are you going to benefit? Definitely like an EDH card. Um, I don't think in standard it's going to do a whole lot, but then again, I could be wrong. Maybe in a control build or something, who knows? But then off, you don't really see control builds often running red. So interesting. Here's Chainsaw. That's pretty dope. <laughs> Two drop artifact equipment. When Chainsaw enters, it deals three damage to up to one target creature. <laughs> All right, that's my sound effect. Whenever one or more creatures die, put a rev counter on Chainsaw. I get it. You're revving up your Chainsaw. Equip creature gets plus X plus zero, where X is the number of rev counters on Chainsaw. Okay. Interesting. 
So the chainsaw gets more powerful over time. Equip cost is three. Ley Line of Hope. That's right, Ley Lines are back. Four drop, if Ley Line of Hope is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. If you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead, as long as you have at least seven life more than your starting life total. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two. That's pretty cool. If you could start, man, there's ways to crazily gain life, you know, by like turn two, turn three, you could have what you need there. And then all your creatures get that anthem, plus two, plus two. This could be fun in, a, in an angel build, you know. There's some angels that really like having life up there. Um, yeah, okay. Leyland of Hope, sweet. Overlord of the Hauntwoods. That would be cool in an angel build for sure. Overlord of the Hauntwoods is a five drop. This is a big boy. Avatar Horror, six, five. Impending four. And then for, uh, for, for three. Impending four for three. If you cast a spell for its impending cost, it enters with four time counters. And isn't a creature until the last is removed. At the beginning of your end step, remove a time counter from it. And then whenever Overlord of the Haunt Woods enters or attacks, create a tapped colorless land token named everywhere that is every basic land type. Do you really need that at that point? You know, I mean... I might be missing something on this. What am I missing that makes this card great? What am I missing here that makes it so great? I got to be missing something. Um, yeah, I got to be missing something. Someone fill me in on that one. Enduring Tenacity, 4-drop, Snake Glimmer. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Okay. I like that. When Enduring Tenacity dies, if it was a creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. It's an enchantment. 4-3. Seems all right. Nothing like, you know, nothing unique we haven't, like, really seen before. Okay. Then here's some art, I guess, to close out the video. All right. Here's uh, some variants for our friend the Wandering Rescuer. Here's Enduring Tenacity. This is the Fractured Foil. Japan showcase version. Holy smother and tithe, man. That looks crazy. And uh, just a regular Japan showcase. Very, very intense. And here's uh, some variants for Overlord. Again, Japan showcase and the Fractured Foil Japan showcase. Wow. I want those. I need those. I want some of that right now. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, let me know your thoughts on Dustmorn. Is this a set that you're hyped about? Is it a set you're not? Why and why not? Let's discuss. I'm Joy Moss, Bad Boy Gaming. Thanks for tuning in. Skadoosh. History.